Hey guys, Kev here, and I want to do my full review or overview on the Evolved EDC Rev prototypes that I got in from Tyler over at Evolved EDC. Um, you guys saw the unboxing of this, and um, I've had it for a few days now. I haven't uh, had it that long, but I also... Um, I don't think I need to. I have a good grasp on things, and I've carried it. I've used it. I've played with it, um, and I have come to a conclusion on them. In the unboxing, I was very positive about them, but I had some gripes that I didn't, you know, absolutely love. Um, after spending more time with these. I'm really, really happy with these, and I think these are uh, awesome. I think they're going to be uh, a really popular piece. I think they're going to be, I think they're going to be unique. Honestly, there's not that many higher end sort of uh, button locks like this. You know, um, I know there's stuff I'm missing, but you know, you have like the Malibu. You know, but you don't have something like a uh, community designed sort of thing where, you know, you can reverse flick. And that's something I always wanted to eventually get to was a uh, button lock design. And then, you know, now it's been very oversaturated in the budget uh, area and it's kind of ruined the, I don't know, it's kind of ruined the luster of the button lock having all of these models uh, from budget brands come out with it, you know. And uh, it's, I had to separate myself from that because I think when these came in, I was kind of like, just, I had just gotten a bunch of those budget ones and it's just like, you know, it can be a little bit, um, I don't know how to explain it, like just overwhelming with how many and then it, I don't know. So I know that's weird to say because, you know, I am constantly getting, you know, frame locks or liner locks or whatever. And I don't say the same thing. I I know. I don't know. It's weird. Anyway, uh, to the Rev. So real quick, uh, stuff you guys probably want to know. There will be a pre-order for this, I believe. Um, it's not going to be a drop. It's going to be a pre-order. And it should be happening right after the Evolved EDC uh, Sin, the first model, gets delivered. So once those get delivered to customers, um, they are going to do the pre-order for the Rev. Um, and he told me he's trying to keep this under 300, which I think is impressive. Now, obviously this one won't be, but this model right here is kind of your base model titanium. I'm assuming it's LMAX M390, something like that. Um, milled clip, button lock, all that stuff on bearings and whatnot. And $300 is, you know, that's, um... You know, he's not taking a huge margin on that. He's not, um, you know, he's doing what he can to keep price down is, is what that tells me. Because I know what Best Tech charges. Um, you know, I don't know necessarily on a button lock. Maybe it's simpler for them and it could be cheaper. That's possible. Um, I haven't, you know, had a button lock quoted. But I can tell you from doing the Buzz and now working on the Stout V2, you know, it's it's expensive and these knives these days need to start costing are gonna start costing three fifty to four hundred. That's what you're gonna see on these pre orders. I mean, from us. The Stout V two is gonna be three hundred and fifty dollars at least. Um uh, it has to be for us to even have it make sense. So you know, uh and that is already happening. If you look at Arcane Design and you look at uh, something obscene, you look at anybody, really, um, other than the newer brands. The you know When you first start, you want to bring that entry-level price in to make it affordable. You want to get people on board, you know? Sorry, I got a drink of my tea. Um, so anyway, he's trying to keep this under 300 and I, I uh, appreciate that. I admire that, but I hope he also charges enough that it makes sense for his business. You know, that's something you have to balance. You have to balance wanting to be a good part of this community and offering things at a good price so that people are more interested. And so you don't feel like you're taking a large, you know, uh, amount of money from people, but you also need to run your business and afford to do that and have it make sense 
to run your business. You know what I mean? So um, hopefully he does all those things and keeps that in mind. But you have this version in plain titanium and belt satin with horizontal flats. Um, then you have this version with PVD handle and then this purple pink and it's more pink anno uh, inside of the milling lines, which are gorgeous. And then you have the same belt satin here with bead blasted flats. And then you have the Zerku tie, I believe, accents. Uh, everything but the um, the uh, the backspacer. You know what would be cool now that I'm just looking at it? Wouldn't it be cool to have a Zerku tie button? That'd be dope. I don't know if that would work, but that'd be sick. Um, so I don't know how much this one's going to be, how much more. I would assume at least 100, maybe 150 more. Um, I know what Best Tech charges for these materials, and it's a lot. So, um, just the backspacers alone from Best Tech for the Buzz were $48 for our cost. On pre-order, we charged $60. We made $12 on those. Like, we were just trying to get people backspacers. So, like, this stuff's expensive, right? They're also doing another version like this one, but with a uh, sort of fade anno on it. And that's going to be a Blue Creek Knives exclusive. So, shout out to Brian over at Blue Creek Knives. Um, I wish him well on that version. Um, I don't know how many there's going to be of it, um, but that sounds really cool. So, uh, I love seeing Brian doing more projects. And he's a big part of the community, and I just love the guy. Check out Blue Creek Knives. Um so yeah, uh, getting into the review. Let's put this one aside and just kind of talk about the knife. Um, aesthetically, I think clothes, I don't love it, but it's okay. It's not like anything's obnoxious or anything. Um, I really just don't like this area right here. And I've said this plenty of times about knives. Um, the Runt 5 from Protect comes to mind. I just don't love when this area right here is really low, like when the blade starts really low. I don't know why the blade to handle just looks off to me in that case. The blade to handle ratio down here is really good. And when you open it, it's fine. It, it, it does not look shorter or anything. Um, so it's just a closed thing. I don't know. You know, it just is what it is. I don't love that. That's all I can say. What I do love is this pattern. Whatever your radial, I don't know, whatever it's called, pattern, really, really cool and unique. It's different and unique. It's on the backspacer. It's just very well done. I love how the clip is over here. I was worried about it functionally. That's not a problem. We'll talk about that later. But um, it looks cool where it is. Um, so you did a good job on that. I love the blade shape. I, I mean, you got to love a warning and sort of a sheep's foot warning in this Blood Groove Fuller comes all the way out to the end. I mean, it's it's pretty sick. I don't love the uh, thumb studs visually. They're growing on me. I will say that. on In all aspects, they're growing on me. I kind of hated them in the unboxing, to be honest. Um, but the more I fidgeted with it and looked at it and whatever, they're actually pretty functional. We'll talk about it. Uh, what I don't love is this side where the screw hole is here and you, you have that screw. It just really throws it off for me. From the top, yeah, it looks fine. From this side, it looks great. But then, eh, I just don't love that. Uh, he did tell me it was not meant to be that way. It was a miscommunication with Best Tech. But he kind of likes it because you can remove it and then you could put regular studs on or whatever you wanted. So I get it. Um, but the lefties, again, get shafted there a little bit because you're going to be staring at that instead of this. And in this case, you know, that's sick. And then you're like, eh, you know, so it is what it is. But uh, here's that radial pattern on this one. Uh, put this one away. Just try to keep your, you know, so you're looking at one thing. Nice bead blasted hardware, Zerku tie clip, collar uh, or collars, I should say. And then studs. Really cool. Um, yeah, so I think it looks good. Open for sure. Digging it. Good vibes. Ergos, man, it is really good in this grip. Um, I really like this grip. Uh, choked up. Now, you could choke back. I never do this. If I have a knife with a choil, I choke up. It's just how I roll. Um, but this works. You have enough room there. Here's a size comparison. I guess I can get the stout out. I think it's going to be a little bit smaller than the stout. But I could be wrong. 
So, uh, handle-wise, it's actually longer than the Stout. Blade-wise, it's shorter. Interesting. Um, like I said, you don't visually notice the blade-to-handle ratio being off when open. But I guess it is. Um, but it's about the size of a Stout. So, hopefully that uh, makes sense for you. So, you have the size right there. So, you probably got about three and a quarter inch blade. Seven and a half, or seven and three quarters overall, seven and a half, something like that. Um, but yeah, ergos are fantastic in this grip right here. Uh, Friday night gas station fight. Oh, yeah, Friday night gas station. Now you have this area here, so it's not the best, but it works. And then if you flip it, well, now you got a really good locked in talon reverse gas station grip, but nobody's doing that. Um, this works really well my fingers on the button but you just gotta be careful obviously not to hit it um that's something to discuss is well one the clip does not get in the way for me it is here i do feel it in my palm because it's a raised area but it's not poking or jabbing or doing anything weird it works it works left-handed choked up it's fine my fingers kind of laying in front of it it doesn't it doesn't feel weird maybe in this grip it feels a little weird but that's it um, now a lot of people are going to ask the button, does it, can you depress this thing while you're using it? And I tested this on the live stream yesterday and it's all going to come down to you, I guess. But for me, no, there's no natural grip where I'm like, Oh, I'm like right on the button. And even right now I can't even push it because just the way my grip is, I'm not, I'm not able to get the pressure on that. Um, so even there, I got it, but like I tried, you know, if you're in a normal grip like this, you're not going to have it happen. If you're in a grip like this, you just got to make sure you're not on the button choke up. Uh, you know, if you're in this grip, I don't know, I'm not right-handed, so it's hard, but I feel like I'm closer to the pivot area here than the button. Um, but like right there, I'm bearing down, not pushing the button left-handed i thought maybe yeah this is where it's gonna happen but i could squeeze as hard as i want no disengagement back here it's in front so it's not a big deal pinch gripped here pinch gripped here like i just i've never had it disengage on me now you know is a button lock something you want to hard to use anyway not really but um I haven't found an issue with it. I did think it's a little odd, the placement of the button and not being recessed at all, you know, um, but it works. It really does work. Now, there's going to be people like this is uh, the way it went for me with the the uh, mini or the full size FSD. I got it. Oops. I got it. Love it. Right. Absolutely love it. Never had a problem disengaging this. Now, I never hard use this anyway, but, you know. Um, and then I sent it to a couple of people and I sent the scotch and things. And I believe he, you know, did all these grips and I don't think he had an issue failing it at all. Um, it got to Jared Neve and Jared had it failing when he was doing draw cuts and stuff. Um, I guess holding it like this, I don't know what he, what he was doing, but I, I can easily push the button there. But, um, that was his hand, like just the way his hand landed with that knife it depressed the button, you know, and that's just how it's going to be with a button lock. I think some people you're just going to have the wrong meat of your hand hit at the wrong time. Um, size comparison. So you would have to be the judge of that, but, um, wow, it looks so much bigger doesn't it. Hold on. Doesn't the mini FSD look really big right there? Um, it's about the same handle length and just a touch more blade, but it looks way bigger uh, in the camera. One more GOM. There you go. About the same again. All right. So, whoops. We've talked about the Ergos. It's going to be a case by case thing. I think overall, most people are not going to have an issue with it. I think part of that is most people are not going to be hard using this. They're going to be fidgeting with it and then cutting stuff, EDC and whatnot. And if you're just paying attention to where you're gripping, you should be fine. Um, so that's Ergo's uh, cutting. So I didn't do much cutting just because it's a prototype. I've only had it a couple days. What I can tell you is we have a 
nice and deep hollow grime. This is done by Best Tech. So this is the same belt satin hand ground hollow grind you're going to see on the Buzz. Um, so I know it should be relatively thin. Guessing 15-ish. 18 there. 17, 18. Uh, 20? I don't know. Come on. 18. It went from like 15 to 18, so it might be closer to 18. Let's see this one. Let's try to get a good angle on it. Make sure I'm zeroed out. Right. Seventeen. Fourteen. Oh, low there. 17 yes it's looking like 17 thousandths behind the edge which i gotta say is perfectly fine for me uh for edc it's plenty i mean that's really good uh we're pretty spoiled these days but i did expect it to be closer to 15 but maybe because it's a shorter blade the grind starts here right um the stock could be thicker to begin with so i don't know but it's a good hollow grind and it, it it's nice and sharp i mean i can it's sticky sharp um you have a nice tip here nice warning style blade sheep's foot style blades so you can get into draw cuts utility cut style stuff um i don't know the steel i should have asked but i think it's gonna be l max or uh 20 cb again um but i can't be positive so that's something you could look up but i'm guessing because they don't have many options you know um we went with l max on the stout v2 he went with l max i think on the first run um the sin so he might have went with l max here i don't know but anyway cutting looks like it's going to be really good i just don't have a ton of experience with it but based on my experience in the past best tech hang hollow grinds all that stuff i think it's going to be really good um carry the the clip is really good um it fits in the pocket really well it's a little odd that it's over on this side, but it's not. In the pocket, it's really nice having the clip on this side. It really kind of pushes the knife into the side of your pants, keeps it tucked away. I carried this in the front right pocket and the back left pocket to test it, and I tried to test if it would do the Emerson Wave Deploy kind of thing that I have trouble with sometimes. No. I thought for sure with the softer spring on these prototypes – that it would just deploy out of pocket at some point. I even tried doing the thing where you kind of like rip it out of the side, like some people do to actually make it Emerson way when it doesn't normally. Couldn't even do that. Uh, so it's good. The weight is really solid. I mean, this has to be around three, three and a half ounces. It can't be much more than that if it's even that much. Um, probably three and a half, I'd say. So really good on the carry. Um, sounds sounds are really good button lock good nice acoustic because it has milling in there just you can hear it bounce down i like the acoustics a lot i'd give it like an eight out of ten um uh, action slash fidget factor okay we come to this point in the video right and you guys know that in the unboxing i was just really hating on these studs well since then i've gotten used to them also gotten a little more used to this spring first thing i want to note is the spring will be stronger in production so that changes everything right i don't like the spring on this very much um i don't like it i will say it's very very soft and that's not my style right some people might love that just not my style so having a stronger spring will make a huge difference for a lot of the things I'm doing right now. So take that into consideration 
as I go forward here. But the studs, I learned to use them. You want to get underneath them, not go on top of them. So what I'm used to doing, let me find a good stud knife. I don't have a ton. That's why it's going to be hard to find one here. Just give me a second. Or just grab this one, whatever. So on a lot of knives, what I do is I kind of grab from the top like this. And then I push. I'm underneath, but I'm also on top of the stud. I don't, like, go under here, right? I go kind of like that. Well, on this, when I do that, I go, like, right over it sometimes. I just slip right over it or whatever, right? But if you get underneath it, you can get a good grip on it. It catches your finger pretty well, right? So it's just a matter of adjusting to the knife. You get under it and flick, right? And then on the reverse flick, you don't need to use the stud, right? What you can do is just grab the fuller. You got the fuller right here. And what I learned to do was to flick the fuller and the stud at the same time. So I kind of come up through here and kind of flick through that. So I'm going up like that. And that tends to catch it really well. I'll try to do it right-handed for you. Like that. I just think it fires better that way. Top of the fuller. Bang. Um, and I just kind of got used to the stud. I got to give it a little wrist flick as I do it, usually. I mean, I can do it standstill. But it's just easier if you give it a little pop at the same time. Um, there's a little bit of stick on the button that has developed overnight. I mean, it wasn't there when I got them. It wasn't there last night during a live stream. But now it's there a little bit when I really pop it out. But now it's gone. That's just that right there. That's just a reassuring click. That's not stick. Um, it's not like a Malibu that has actual stick. This is just, now it does, right here. A little bit. But um, overall, it's been really good in my opinion. So, not much stick or anything like that. I'm, I'm excited about these. The drop action, you can see. I mean, that's these are bank vaults, guys. Um, I've done the uh, spine whacking tests on both. Um... So they're solid. They just need stronger springs, and then they're going to be money. So that's the uh, Evolved EDC Rev coming soon for pre-order. I'm going to get these off to, I believe, my buddy Jim, uh, Jim Skelton. So definitely keep an eye on his channel. It, he might post a video before I ever post mine. We'll see. Um, really good job, Tyler. Uh, and thank you for uh, letting me check these out. I really appreciate that, as always. Um, I wish you the best of luck with this project. Um, it's a cool one. It's unique. I'm glad that somebody's, you know, finally pushing that button lock a little bit further, trying to do a more premium one, working with one of the, the more premium uh, OEMs like Best Tech, Riot, to do a, a button lock like this. Um, so we'll see how it all pans out, but I think the price point's good. The product's really good and unique, and uh, there's going to be a cool exclusive with Blue Creek Knives, and uh, it's just cool stuff. So let me know what you guys think down below. I would really appreciate that. I'm sure Tyler would really appreciate that, and I love you guys. I hope you have an absolutely fantastic day, and I will catch you later.